Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. It is a start of another week. I hope you had an amazing week. Um, yes. Am I wearing a hoodie? Yes. Am I really tired? Also, yes. Have I already done my skin and my brows? Absolutely. Listen, yeah, I'm extremely tired. Um, so I'm gonna do the eyes, just my eyes say. There won't be like less stories or anything like that. It's all, all gonna be the same. Nothing's changing, guys. But yeah, hi, if you never usually join me on a Monday, um, hi, it's Monday. I basically read your ghost stories that you guys send me on a Monday. It's a nice little break from my usual hardcore makeup videos. <laughs> um, and it's a nice break for me as well. I take two things I love and that's horror and a paranormal and makeup and I basically create a look for you guys. So yeah, if you have any ghost stories, any weird stories, any alien stories, did you see one? Are you one? Send them here to this email address and I'm slowly, slowly making my way through them. Um, so if you have sent one, it is gonna pop up at some point. And also like I do in every one of these, I just wanna give a shout out to Bailey Sarian who inspired this whole series of her Murder her Mystery Makeup Mondays. Yes, absolutely incredible. She does makeup and um, true crime stories together. So usually I come up with a kind of like ghost that I'm, that I want to be, not want to be, you know, that has like a backstory. I have a Pat McGrath palette. Um, I have a few here and I used one in last week's video, but I basically want to kind of use this greeny gold and, um, oh, I didn't buy one for green. Mm. So I kind of want to look like I've been like taken by the creature from the Black Lagoon. And then we, we like got on really well and then he did my makeup and he was like, but you do realize that I actually do have to kill you. Like that's, that's what I do. I'm a monster. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's a good, it's a good theme. It's a good theme. So I will link everything below for you guys. So I'm just gonna start by priming my eyelids with my usual MAC Paint Pot. And painterly. Guys, yesterday, just for you guys who have been here a lot, it got to a point yesterday where it literally sounded like my neighbors were running backwards and forwards upstairs. So I stood on a chair and just punched the ceiling so hard three times. I could feel the shock from them. <laughs> They're like, oh my God. So let's see how that works out. So we're gonna do a nice and easy cut crease today because I'm tired and it just, it just helps. Okay. Okay, let's just get into it. Let's start with our first story. So our first story today is called In The Basement. It says, hi Robert, I really love watching your ghost story videos. So I wanted to share with you my own paranormal experience. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was actually attending a school that was on a US military base in Germany. <clears throat> Germany. We rented a house in one of the neighboring villages, but to be honest, I never felt comfortable in this house. There was a strange apartment in the bottom level of the house, in the basement, that always gave me a creepy feeling. It would always feel as though someone was hovering behind me. <laughs> We had no other use for the extra apartment, so we turned it into an office. One night, I was down there using the computer. My parents were upstairs in the living room watching TV. I stood up from a chair and turned to head towards the stairs. Suddenly, an overwhelming feeling of terror washed over me, and I became petrified. I could feel something hovering next to me on my right-hand side. I also could feel a heavy breathing on the side of my face and could see my hair moving. Suddenly, my name was whispered in a deep, guttural voice right into my ear. I instantly bolted up the stairs. I refused to ever go down there alone. Even just walking by the stairwell that led down there always gave me a feeling that I was being watched. Hmm. Thank you for your story. What the hell? When it knows your name, get out that house, call a priest, call a vicar, a lady's name. Call anyone of any religious belief and just get them in your house. <laughs> get that out. That is absolutely terrifying. Thank you for sending that in. Now I'm in the spirits. Okay, so our next story is called The Angry Woman Who Whispers at Night. I think we need to stop whispering immediately. 
It says, hey Robert, first of all, I love your makeup ghost stories. Thank you so much. They are my favorite. Your personality is so fun and energetic while still being down to earth. You are so easy to watch. Thank you. You say fun and energetic for day. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> when I was in college, I lived in a house with three other girls. The house was old, but had been renovated right before we all moved in. We were told by the neighbors that an elderly woman had died in the house. In the room right beside mine, things were quiet at first, but not for long. My dog, Luna, sweetest dog ever would never hurt a fly, was living with me there and usually slept with me in the bed. And every single night around two or three in the morning, she would make her way to lay on top of me. Mm -hmm. She would stare in one direction off the room and growl like somebody was in there. This would last for about 15 minutes. I could feel someone watching me and the feeling I got was anger from whoever or whatever it was. So I would hide under the covers and wait for my dog to stop growling. There were other things like the sink being turned on and off, doors banging shut, footsteps going down the stairs. One time I watched as it sounded like someone was running down them, but no one was there. One time my roommate was alone in the house on the phone with her friend. They were chatting and her friend said, oh my God, are you okay? Who just screamed bloody murder? My roommate did not hear the scream, but her friend did over the phone. Creepy, right? Yeah. <laughs> One night things escalated. Me and my friend were home alone and laying on the pull out sofa in the living room downstairs. We had been talking and laughing and as it got late, we quietened down a bit and were laying for a few moments, just as you do right before you go to sleep but we weren't quite asleep yet. All of a sudden, I start to hear whispering coming from upstairs. It sounded angry and like it was trying to yell. It went on and on for what seemed like forever. After about five or 10 minutes of me just listening, I turned over to face my friend and I asked her, hey, are you still up? She said, yes. I asked, do you hear that? She said, yes. I just thought it was in my head or I was starting to dream. We both heard the angry whispering of the old mad ghost woman who was haunting our house. The whispering went on for about 20 minutes. We just laid there, confused. I think it wanted us out. I still remember those whisper sounds to this day, and it's been about 10 years. It still freaks me out. Luckily, the ghost stayed in that house, but I always wonder if the people living there now hear whispers, screams, or footsteps of the angry woman who died in the house. I mean, can you imagine being like, you know, an older person who passes away and then you're still in your house and like loads of young girls move in? I'd be like, that's not fair. I was a young girl once. Yeah, I would be pissed to be fair. <laughs> do you, thank you so much for your story. I would love to ask you guys, do you think Say you were really, really, really haunted, right? To a point where it like ruined your lives, like horror film haunted, like your child went crazy and, and you were scared of it. And then, I don't know, something else. Hair was coming out your sink. Do you think it's right to tell the people who move in about your experiences? Because then you're kind of doing like an injustice, right? You're kind of like, oh, as long as I'm not haunted, they can be haunted. However, telling a group of people that's just moving to a house that someone died there before is a little bit... All right, our next story. Grooming Salon Ghost. Oh, bet not hurt any dogs. I'm so excited this is a series now because I have a fun short story for you, thank you. So when I worked in a grooming salon when I lived in New Jersey, we always joked that the store was haunted. Things would disappear just to reappear in places we've already looked for them. Stuff would move around the grooming salon while no one was looking. Lights we swore were turned off would be on the next morning. It was the kind of stuff that makes you think it could be a ghost, but it could also be my coworkers just messing around. Well, one day, a few months before I left the store and moved, I was in the front of a salon, totally alone, doing some paperwork. And from behind me, I heard someone say my name. Clear as day, I heard it, but I didn't recognize the voice. I turned around to find no one behind me. I walked into the back to go and tell my coworker, but she was in the back with her earplugs in 
drying her groom dog. She looked at me weird and I just shrugged it off and walked back up the front. Once I settled down, convincing myself I was just hearing things because I was tired and got back to work and heard it again. I didn't look this time. I just called management and asked them to cover me so I could take a long bathroom break. Nothing really spooky happened after that, but I still think about it sometimes five years later and it freaks me out. Yeah, that would scare me too. Just things saying your name. Again, this episode seems to have like a theme of people saying people's names. Well, not people, ghosts, you know. I'm just going very quickly tight line these areas with some black. Honestly, I hope my neighbors fall through the ceiling. I wouldn't even care if it ruined my stuff. Our next story, kids are creepy. <laughs> yes, they are. We all know this by now. So it says, hey Robert, thought this was such a cool idea for your channel and couldn't help but share my story. It's not exactly scary, just creepy. When my mum found out she was pregnant with me, unfortunately, my great granddad had recently died before she got to tell him the news. This is something she always still says she regrets not being able to do as he has such a good relationship with my older brother. Fast forward three to four years, and I used to go and stay with my nana, my great granddad's daughter, while my mum was at work. One day, after my mum had picked me up from nana's, I spent the whole journey talking about my great granddad and acting like I'd known him. My mum thought it was so sweet that my nana was keeping his memory alive by telling me stories about him. When she dropped me back home the next day, she asked my nana what other stories she had told me because I was obviously enjoying them a lot and spent all morning saying how I couldn't wait to come back. This is when my nana revealed she'd never mentioned my great grandfather to me because she didn't think I'd understand or be interested. To this day, we don't know how I knew about him in all those details. I think we can kind of guess, eh? We've had a lot of stories on this, in this series, about like, um, relatives like speaking. I hope you guys can't hear that, what's going on in the background too much. About like relatives like speaking to, um, younger relatives after they've passed away. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe you encountered him. Encountered? I just kind of want to put a layer of gold on top of this as well. Yeah. Okay, so our next story, I'm not gonna read the title because it kind of gives it away and I feel like this might be a good one. I already have highlighter on but I'm gonna go in with a milk highlighter just because I want extra today. It says, hi Robert, I'm totally loving your channel. Thank you so much. This story is true and happened back in 1994. I remember just starting to awaken after a 12 hour shift as a nurse. I was in that twilight area where sleep and awareness are merging. That's me right now. Suddenly everything in my mind went black. I mean, in impenetrable blackness. Only a very tiny bright light could be seen at a distance. The light grew and I started to see the outlines of people in the light. They were vague entities, seemingly unaware of my presence. They moved without physical movement. Then this young boy appeared. I can still see him. His face stayed in the shadow. I could see his hair. It seemed to be a dark brown with light shining through the edges and changing the hair to a lighter reddish brown. He was wearing cargo shorts, a t-shirt, and some dockers or slide loafers. He ran his fingers through his hair and spoke. Hey, he said. Then, tell Chris he won't be missing me on a basketball court. He said it with a grin and seemingly a joke. I didn't know him, never met this kid, Turned out my cousin Chris and his friend Preston were speeding on the 101, attempting to beat the highest record speed on the BMW. Preston was driving. They flipped it. Preston died at the scene. My cousin Chris was unrecognizable, though he did survive. I told my grandma about the dream, and she said, tell him. When I told Chris, he asked me if he called him Chris, and I said, yes, we call him Christopher. Then he told me that he and Preston played basketball, but not often because Preston wasn't very good at it. Call me shocked. Christopher said it was definitely from Preston. I explained what I saw and he just stood, nodded 
and cried. That was him. That was Preston. I don't know if a message soothed him or made him feel worse. I do know that I begged the universe to remove my open mind. It scared me too much and I don't like to hurt people. I hope you enjoyed the story, though it is truly tragic. Thank you so much for your story. What a thing to tell someone like, you know, I had this message, does it make sense to you? And then for it to actually make sense is, is um, yeah, it can be scary. Okay, so I'm gonna whack on some lashes and then I have one more story. Okay, so this story is called Ghostly Wedding. First, let me say, I live for Monday ghost stories and makeup, thank you. I have been so excited to share one of my many tales with you. In August of last year, my sister got married again. Missing from the wedding party was her beloved son, who passed away when he was only three. We've since called him our angel. Anyways, her wedding day arrives and I get there early. I am the one doing all the hair, makeup and pictures for the event. My sister comes to drop off the dresses and is going back to get my nieces and the rest of the family. So I'm on one end of the church getting ready and all alone when I hear the front door slam. Okay, no big deal. I yelled out, hello? I'm back here guys, no answer, weird. When you walk into the front doors of a church, there's two hallways, one on the left, which I was down, and one on the right, where the men would be getting ready. I yelled again even louder, hello? I'm back here, but didn't get a response. And I didn't hear another sound. So I was going to let them know I was in the building. I walked all the way to the end of the hall, through the chapel and down the hall, where I was sure I would find them. Nothing, nobody was there at all. I know I heard the door slam because it startled me from how loud it was, but nobody was anywhere. I went and checked the kitchen as well, nothing. I go back to getting ready, a little on edge, until someone finally did get there and we carried on. The ceremony went quick, nothing out of the norm, and my sister wanted her photos back that day. I got in and was excited to see them, and I almost shit myself when I saw what I saw. My sister said it looks like angel wings, and that it could have very well been her son playing tricks on me early that day. The preacher in the photo has been known to walk with angels, but my best friend told me that the whole church is haunted. Either way, you be the judge. Well, how weird. It does kind of look like they're, they're fanning out, like feathering out. That's so cute if he was there. That's really cute. All right, guys, I just realized, I just remembered in my mind why I did this look. And it's, I was speaking to a makeup artist the other day called Tony, who um, sent me an IG video when he saw a picture I posted off using a Pat McGrath palette. He was like, this is how I use it. Um, and it, it's in the back of my head here. I was like, oh, I want to do that. And now I've just realized why I did it. So go and check out that video. The way he does this kind of um, uh, halo kind of look is, is amazing. It always looks like um, like an oil slick. It, it's so incredible. So inspired by him, really, really great. Thank you so much for joining me this week, guys. Like I said, if you have any weird stories, paranormal or not, send them right here to this email address and I will make my way through those. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to consider subscribing if you want more videos like this or just makeup videos in general. I will see you Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and then Monday again for more ghost stories. Have an amazing week, guys. Power through. I feel like we're almost there. Yeah, see you soon, bye.